I'm going to call the uh, Sheboygan Common Council Committee of the whole meeting to order for Wednesday, uh, March 14th. Uh, would you call the roll, please? Alderperson sure. Kittleson. Okay. Um, you said belt is, excuse, belt is excused, correct? Yes. Boren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Common. Here. Hammond. Here. Heideman. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson is here. Matichek. Excused. Excuse. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Excused. Van Akron. Here. Ann Vanderweel. Excused. Percy. Uh, haven't heard yet. He might be on the way. Okay. We'll see. All right. One, two, we need three, nine four, for a five, quorum. six, what seven, we eight, nine. We have ten present. We have a quorum. Okay, we have a quorum. Let's all rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just... Uh, Mention to the older persons we are on television tonight, so we'll need our microphones. Uh, item number four on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the February 1st, 2012 meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the meetings from February 1st. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Next, we have a uh, public forum on agenda items, uh, limit of three minutes per person. Does anybody wish to be heard on any of the agenda items tonight? Does anybody wish to be heard? And for a third time, does anybody wish to be heard? Chairman's comments uh, have none. Item number, item number seven on the agenda is Corporal Roy Kloss of the uh, Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department will be present and will discuss the Sheboygan County Jail Inmates Community Service Program. Public Works Director uh, David Beeble will also participate. Uh, I would entertain a motion to open up the floor to Corporal Kloss. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to open up the floor to Corporal Kloss. Corporal, would you like to step up, please? I was going to have uh, Dave start out explaining uh, what they talked about uh, last night okay. and then uh, answer any questions you may have after that. All right. Okay. David, go ahead. Hey, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> the, the Department of Public Works, we've been investigating this program and looking at it some time. Mr. Kloss from the Sheriff's Department gave us a very nice packet of information. It was very helpful to go through this in detail. Working with staff in the, in the department, I think what we'd like to do and what we're proposing to the council is, is to go into this. Uh, we want to try it out this summer. What, we, what we've identified is um, using this type of um, worker in what we have at the cemetery for our summer seasonal temporary program. And what's nice about that is the cemetery is a fixed site and it's a large site, um, 40 acres. It has plenty of work um, during, during this season, the peak season when we would hire the seasonal people, we'd have anywhere from three to five <coughs> additional personnel. We have two full-time personnel at the cemetery year round. They dig the graves, they set the headstones, they do the foundations, they operate the equipment. But during the peak periods, we bring in anywhere from three to five seasonal. Um, what that equates to is, um, in last year, in the 011 budget for se seasonal work, we spent $33,000 on temporary and seasonal labor. So we think this is an opportunity here to use the work release volunteer program to save, as well as what it is, as I mentioned, it's a fixed site. One of the issues with the program is we need to provide transportation for, for these workers. And yes, we may have needs throughout the community, but it does get a little bit 
some problems logistically for our, our staff, our full-time staff, which has to provide supervision to this personnel to transport them from site to site to site. So what's nice, that's one advantage of the cemetery. It's a fixed site. There's plenty of work, uh, plenty of grass to be cut every day, plenty of uh, trimming to be done around the, the gravestones. And uh, we really think this could be a great pilot this summer to see um, if this works. And if it does, then it might lead itself to other programs or special projects throughout the city that we could expand upon it. So that's going to be kind of our, our, our um, suggestion this evening. And um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, thanks, Mr. Bebel. Just a quick question on the, um, the quality side of it. Um, who's monitoring that? Who's in charge of them during the day? I'm assuming it would be our people that are at the cemetery. If there's issues of quality, who addresses that? I mean, obviously it's a cemetery. If we want to make sure it's done respectful and you know, and, and things like that. So who's going to monitor that? Correct. My my understanding, we work with the sheriff's department. They get, they screen the initial volunteers, ex explain the type of work that is being offered. Those volunteers then, um, we pick them up, we get them set up, we work with them, we train them, give them their what their expectations are, and if there's problems, we immediately contact the sheriff's department, and that person, if there's a situation, will probably be pulled from the program, and a different volunteer would be brought in. Alderman Carlson. Thank, Thank you, Chairman. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the, um, could you discuss the possible, the types of inmates that we may have out on this work release program? Um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to defer that to Mr. Kloss. You could explain that further. Most of the people that are uh, out have Huber. That's decided by the courts. Um, the people we are using two years ago, three years ago, would be the people working at Kohler, French, uh, numerous factories, businesses around the community. When the economy uh, went down, uh, I have had all these guys with nothing to do. And I thought it was an opportunity uh, for them to do something, for us to give back to the community. Um, so these are the same people that would be going out to work daily. Um, when we screen them, uh, to put it bluntly, is I'm not going to take someone who uh, is a possible drug dealer, uh, someone there for sexual assault, uh, and put them in an area where we don't want them. So they are screened, and in the last three years that we've been doing this, we've did approximately 20 to 25,000 hours, uh, anywhere from bookworm gardens, um, Habitat for Humanity, um, several uh, Salvation Army, Bethesda. We have never had a problem yet. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Van Ackland, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to touch on that, you, you've done some of this volunteer work in the past without any problems, you indicated. Um, can you, you indicated that it's going to be a volunteer program, so in no way they're going to be city employees of any kind? Is that, am I getting that correct? It's going to be a volunteer basis. They're not going to be city employees of any way. But we'll have city employees that are full-time that are working. Right. But when we talk about the summer seasonal, at least for this program, it's a volunteer. Right. My understanding it's unpaid through through the, <coughs> the sheriff's program. I guess my, my only concern is the city's liabilities if something would occur, whether or not this person would be, again, from what my understanding, it, it, technically an inmate with the Sheboygan County, um, my concern would be the liability side of that, and maybe Steve can touch on that, as far as if something would occur, um, does the city incur any liability for them voluntarily doing work at, uh, on our behalf? I guess that'd be my concern. Yeah, it, it, Alderman Van Anker and I will have Attorney McLean up in a few minutes to address that. In fact, we addressed that last night at Public Works, and Steve's got a document that he's going to go over with us. It's a good question. Any other questions for Mr. Beeble? Uh, Corporal Class, if you could just go over a little bit, just a little bit of the history of the program, and again, some of the venues where, the, where they've been working, and uh, some of the nonprofits or churches where they've actually been working the last couple of years. Like I said, it started in 2009, and since that time we did, and this is an approximate uh, guess, 
20 to 25,000 hours. Uh, in that time, we've had no injuries. Uh, we've had no major infractions. Um, the thing I want to bring up is these guys have something to gain by doing community service. Uh, we do have the community service people that are court ordered, but also what we provide them for doing community service by state statutes, we're obligated to reimburse them. Um, in most people's cases, they earn time off their sentence. So approximately every 24 hours that they put in doing community service, they get 24 hours off their sentence. And the days that they do community service, they are not charged their fees uh, while they're incarcerated. So they do have a lot to lose. Uh, we have, give you an example, uh, last year we had a gentleman that I believe he needed to be out for his brother's wedding. He volunteered to do community service and he worked every hour we could give him so he could be out before his brother's wedding. If they violate, I can take, if they've earned 30 days credit, I can take all 30 days away from them. So they do have something to lose by not following the rules. Um, as far as where, um, Cheboygan County, we have uh, two guys working at Rocky Knoll uh, with their maintenance department for probably the last six months. Every morning they come to the detention center, pick them up, take them out to Elkhart, bring them back every afternoon. Uh, Fountain Park Church, uh, Bethesda, uh, the Gateway Community Project, uh, the Little Red Schoolhouse. Um, just a couple weekends ago, uh, I believe it was at Praise Fellowship, uh, we had six inmates there for the whole weekend helping them set up for <coughs> some banquet they had. Uh, Bookworm Gardens. <sighs> and there's numerous other sites. Uh, I understand why you're questioning this and why I'm here to answer this, but these, the gentlemen we are using are generally the people that are working. I, and it's, I can't stress that enough. Um, Habitat for Humanity, the Restore, they weren't supposed to open up till probably this month, next month. We went in and did approximately 3,000 hours and they opened up what, a month, month and a half ago. What was funny is the first day that they started, they had their whole board there because they were so worried. Um, after approximately two hours, they looked at each other and said, what are we doing here? And they all left except for one. Um, it works. Um, I can't promise you that there's not gonna be problems, but if you had a volunteer a uh, program or a community service program where you were just taking people off the street, there's no guarantee you're gonna, that's gonna work. The advantage you have to using our people is you can call me, you can call Officer Rick Meyer, there's four of us in our unit, and we will be there in a matter of 10, 15 minutes. If we can't be there, we will call the Sheriff's Department and a patrol officer <coughs> will be there. No one else can say that with volunteers. If there's a problem, you call us, we're gonna take care of it. Any other questions? Uh, Attorney McLean, would you like to come up and uh, share, share with us what you shared with us at uh, the Public Works Committee meeting last night? Thank you, Corporal. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got two handouts. Uh, one is a memo that, that uh, handed out to the Public Works Committee members yesterday. And then uh, the second one is a draft resolution to uh, basically authorize entering into this program. The, the committee also yesterday asked that I prepare a draft of as, as far as the uh, <clears throat> the memo goes that that <clears throat> dealt with 
I received a copy of the Sheriff's Department's uh, materials that they had handed out, and I reviewed those and provided my comments to the committee. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, there are just a few things I pointed out. First, uh, pursuant to the statutes, uh, the sheriff doesn't assign prisoners under this program to projects that would result in the displacement of employed persons from their jobs. So uh, it's not a program where we can terminate city employees and just have these volunteers provide the service. Uh, that's not the contemplation here. We're talking about using volunteers in areas where uh, we've used sort of temporary seasonal people, so it would not be displacing people from the jobs. <clears throat> Second, uh, before prisoners assigned to work under the program begin work, the employer or other person in charge of a place of employment that's the site of the proposed work project shall post at the location where notices <coughs> to employees are usually posted a written notice informing employees that prisoners have been assigned to work at the the place of employment. So that's uh, just sort of a procedural step that uh, we as the city being the place of employment would need to post a notice uh, on the employee bulletin board at the Public Works Department uh, indicating that uh, prisoners have been assigned under this program to work at, at the cemetery or wherever. Uh, <clears throat> Third, in the packet of materials, there is a waiver of liability uh, for that the participants, the inmates, all sign. Uh, but I noted that that waiver of liability just goes to Sheboygan County and the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department, holds them harmless. So it's my recommendation that <clears throat> um, that those inmates that are going to volunteer providing services to the city, sign a similar uh, waiver of liability that uh, releases the city and its department and its officers and employees from liability. Uh, basically, it mirrors the language that the sheriff's department has in their waiver, and I've attached a copy of that to the uh, draft resolution. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, the inmate would release and hold the city and its uh, department, its officers, employees from any liability claims and demands of whatever kind of nature which arise or may hereafter arise from the inmate's activities as a volunteer and also <coughs> releases or discharges the city from any liability with respect to bodily injury, personal injury, injury, death, and so forth, uh, <coughs> resulting... Uh, uh, as a result of their participation in the program. Uh, <clears throat> the final thing I noted in my memo is on the back there, uh, the statute that this work camp program is, is uh, uh, authorized under has an immunity provision <clears throat> that protects the city <coughs> or <coughs> whoever the uh, uh, the end user of the services are from civil liability uh, related to uh, death or injury of the prisoner related to carrying out any responsibilities under the work camp program. And that includes, and it specifies to, uh, transportation of the inmates to and from the site. So since we're responsible for providing the transportation, if there's a car wreck or something, uh, uh, on the way to or from, uh, the city is immune from liability for those injuries. Uh, <clears throat> the only exception to that is in subsection C there in the back that uh, the immunity does not apply to any person whose act or omission involves reckless, wanton, or intentional misconduct. Uh, that's pretty high threshold of uh, misconduct. <coughs> so. From a liability standpoint, I think uh, the city is pretty well protected. 
Um, and I think that was the basic question was liability. Uh, so that's what I covered last night with the uh, Public Works Committee. The second document I drafted, if I can just go on to that, Mr. Chairman, Please. if that's right. Um, I just put this together today. Resolution approving the city's participation in the summer in the Sheboygan County Work Camp Program. Um, and basically, pursuant to statutory authority, the county board has established the county work camp program for purposes of providing reformation and employment of persons sentenced to the county jail. And whereas another program administered by the Sheriff's Department, locations and properties of the city of Sheboygan are eligible as work sites. And whereas inmates assigned to the program provide services on a volunteer basis without monetary compensation. And whereas public works director expressed an interest in and willingness to participate in the program, uh, be it resolved, public works director at his discretion is hereby authorized to work with the county sheriff's department for participation by the public works department in the work camp program. That as a condition to any inmate providing services to the city under the program, the inmate be required to sign a work camp volunteer waiver of liability <clears throat> in, in form substantially similar to the attached and uh, included that the public works director would periodically update the public works committee on the department's experience with the program. So uh, I just submit that as a draft and uh, council's free to tweak that as they wish, but um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Any questions for Attorney McLean? Uh, Corporal Klaas, uh, with this draft that uh, Attorney McLean did uh, the, for the waiver of liability, would that, would you see that as a problem of having the inmates sign that in addition to the one you have for the program? Other, other places that we have been have also did the same thing. So okay. No, there is no problem. All right. I should also let, also let the committee of the whole know that uh, after having Corporal Kloss at a meeting a month ago and then having an update yesterday from a, Attorney McLean and uh, uh, Director Beeble that uh, the uh, Public Works Committee last night uh, unan unanimously supported going ahead with this program as outlined by Attorney McLean as far as the legal aspect of it and the input from Director Beeble. Uh, okay. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I guess I would entertain a motion uh, to uh, from the council to well, you can make the motion. I'm not going to tell you what the motion should be, but I'll, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, would make that motion to approve um, the resolution as uh, written by Attorney McLean, um, given the caveats um, uh, assigned. Um. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve the resolution. Uh, is there any further discussion? Uh, no further discussion. Would you call the roll, please, on this one? Um, Belt is excused. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson says aye. Uh, Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. I think I got it. All eyes. Motion carries. Uh, Attorney McLean, if I could just ask you then, uh, could you get a copy of this to Sue Richards in time for Monday night's council meeting? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, item number eight on the agenda. And that is council document number 5-6 from the February 6, 2012 council meeting, RO number 357-11-12 by the city clerk, submitting a communication from Richard Hartman stating that the outcome of the upcoming mayoral recall election, no matter the winner, must not prevent the quasi-judicial hearing from happening for it, is o for it is the only way to put this matter behind us. I'll entertain a motion. Move the file. Second. We have a motion and a second to file. Any discussion? I think we can do all eyes on this one. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Item number nine, nine on the agenda is council document number 5-5 from the February 6, 2012 council meeting, uh, RO number 356-11-12 by the city clerk, submitting a communication from the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance questioning why the older persons haven't introduced a referendum question about the full-time or part-time mayor. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for discussion. Uh, let's see, I believe Alderman Carlson. That's an old one. <coughs> Pardon me? That's an old one. That's an old one. Alderman Raisler. I move to file it. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to file. Under discussion, I see uh, former Mayor Susha is here and he indicated to me that he wanted to make a few remarks on this. So I would entertain a motion to open the floor to uh, former Mayor Richard Susha. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. For the record, uh, Richard, would you give us your address, please? Uh, Richard Susha, 15 North Point Drive, Sheboygan. Thank you. <clears throat> I won't belabor the point tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but SCTA Taxpayer Alliance is pleased to see the referendum on a full-time or part-time mayor for the question is binding or advisory? That is really the question apparently raised by the press. It is my understanding when there's a change in the form of government, it must be a charter ordinance change which requires a binding referendum. The city attorney could answer that later if you'd like. And we also feel that the duties have been reduced enough to warrant a part-time mayor. We don't need two full-time positions. The county seems to operate very well with their system. And don't forget the citizens will still vote for their mayor, only it will be part-time. I won't belabor the points of what the mayor will or will not do. Uh, that you can discuss later if you'd like. Uh, you have received my email and correspondence from the other SCTA members. And I'm saying you don't need a full-time cheerleader and visionary as the press writes. Large salaries don't equate to better quality people. A dedication to the job is what matters. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Susha. We have a motion on the floor to file this document. Is there any further discussion? I think we can do all eyes in this one. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? The chair votes aye. Uh, next, we have uh, agenda item number 10, which is council document number 4-4 from the council meeting of March 5th, 2012, resolution number 154-11-12 by alderpersons Carlson, Boren, and Hammond, a resolution calling for a binding referendum on whether or not the city of Sheboygan shall continue having a full-time mayor. If voters so choose, the alternative shall be reducing the role of mayor to a part-time position. Uh, I would entertain a motion to get discussion going on this issue. Alderman Carlson, did you want to make a motion? Yes, I move to approve with a favorable recommendation of the council. Second. We have a motion and a second to <coughs> approve uh, under discussion. And if I would, I would ask, I would ask that our comments on this be I guess not on what the merits of a full or part-time mayor are, but whether we want to put this out to a referendum. So, I mean, I'll offer, a, uh, I'll give a little latitude on that, but I wish the discussion would be on whether we're going to go ahead with the referendum or not. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, obviously, my past uh, position on this has been um, to continue with a full-time mayor, so obviously I'm not in favor of the referendum. And I guess I just want to uh, add one comment um, for those of you that are, um, 
uh, I'm looking at uh, introducing uh, an ordinance then if, we're, if we do decide to move forward to this um, to also include on the referendum uh, to downsize um, the size of the common council as well. So uh, if we're gonna change the face of the government, we might as well do it all one time and, and put it to the voters um, at that point in time. So uh, the second thing, I, I guess, because um, it does determine whether it's a full-time or part-time has, has a lot to do with the referendum. Uh, I would like to hear from uh, our current mayor um, just on the last 10 days of how his job duties have gone and, and how he sees this uh, coming forward as far as being a part-time position of a couple hours uh, a week or whether he looks at this being as something that's going to be a challenge to um, work 40 plus hours a week. So I guess that's something I'd, I'd like to open the floor if, if possible um, to get his input on it as well. Thank you, Alderman Reisler. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Chairman. I think at this point, I, 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 don't, I don't see why we wouldn't want to send it to the people. I mean, they ultimately have to, to pay their, their tax bills. We, we are, we have changed the face of our government. We did install a, a, a chief administrative officer. We didn't really give them a choice in that, in that matter. But this is our, our last time, at least for the next five years, to allow them to have the choice in how they want their city government to run. And I, I would support that resolution to put the size of the council on there. If we're gonna do it all, we might as well do it all at once, but we just can't do it right now. And then in terms of um, what, the, what the mayor is doing now or what the mayor is doing in three years from now, that's something that we can, we're still working on. This referendum isn't gonna come out until November. That's when we're trying to place it on the ballot. But once again, I, I don't see what the issue is, is letting, uh, of letting the taxpayers decide what they want their city government to look like. Us as a body, yes, some people make the argument that we should make that decision because we're elected, but th this is bigger than that. This is bigger than just the eight people here. So to not let it to go to the people, I, I think is a mistake. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Hammond, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think the part of this, and it's for those that were involved with the document, or it's well known, is the term part-time. We're considered part-time, but I can guarantee you, I probably spend as many hours doing city business as somebody that was doing this full time. That, that term part time bothers me. They keep throwing that out like, you know, somebody's going to work at a mini mart for two hours a week. You know, as the position of the mayor, I don't care if that person works 25 hours a week or 100 hours a week, the taxpayers are gonna be the one that ultimately boots them. This is really a financial argument. How much does the mayor get paid given the job description that's out there now? Um, you know, is it worth 25,000? Is it worth 50,000? Is it worth the current salary? That's really in my mind what this argument is framed about, not full-time versus part-time. Because again, as an elected official, we can't say, Alderman Decker, you can only work four hours a week. And you can put as much time and effort into this as you want. Um, you know, that, and that's the struggle I'm having. And I know it's semantics, but it's that one term. If we as a body say, mayor position, you're making 30 grand a year, that's within our purview, and I think we would be able to get quality people to do it at 30 grand a year, as long as we took away the requirement that they couldn't have a second job. So I think somewhat we're framing the argument wrong by saying part-time versus full-time. It should be, do we change the ordinance to say, you can have a second job and we're gonna pay you 25 grand to do this? Um, so I guess, you know, take that into consideration as we, as we go forward. Um, you know, I certainly not a big fan of the term full-time versus part-time, certainly would be a fan of looking at the salary and saying is this commiserate or commensurate with the level of responsibilities and duties that are now required by the mayor. Um, and I'm not gonna speak for Mayor Van Akron, I don't know what, uh, I'm sure he's got an opinion on this, but I'm sure he would also agree that the duties now aren't what they used to be and certainly wouldn't uh, warrant you know, $70,000 plus benefits, so thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Van Akron, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess I'm gonna go back a few months to when we, we talked about the city administrator position. Um, this idea was floated, it came out. We discussed it, I believe, in this committee, um, and, and we voted it down. Um, one of the reasons I'm not supporting this document tonight is partly to do with the city administrator decision we made a couple months ago. Um, I agreed with the city administrator position then, and I, and I do now, but I believe it, in that going forward because of the fact that the city administrator and a mayor are two separate entities 
one of which who implements the policy that this body decides or as the council decides, and the other who is a very political person who is out there, again, with a political agenda, who steers his political vision. The, the people have an opportunity to decide on that person based on his political stance or his or her political stance. I think by going to a part-time mayor, a lot of that political stance and a lot of that political steering is gonna to fall to the city administrator who the, the people don't get to decide on. I, I feel if you're gonna go that direction, I think it should almost go to just that one person who's then elected and he puts his political stance out there so that the people can decide whether I agree with that po person's political stance, their political agenda, or I don't. I think under the current system with, at, with the city administrator who, again, implements the policies that we set, and, and a mayor who, again, sets his political agenda based on his beliefs, based on what he or, the, he or she thinks is the right direction for the city to go in, that person is elected based on that stance, based on their stance on the issues. I think that's the right way to go. I think we have an opportunity to have the best of both of that. You, you have the opportunity to have a mayor with a reduced salary and, and a city administrator who then implements the policies that we decide. I don't think we've given that a chance. We, we implemented that a few months ago, and at this point we are now going backwards, and I guess that's a little bit disappointing to me because I don't think we've given that a chance. I don't think anyone in here would disagree that the last several months has been a circus, and unfortunately we haven't had an opportunity to see how well that is or isn't going to work. So I hope to see that going forward with the, with the mayor's office at a reduced salary, with the chief administrator officer who's a non-political person, who doesn't steer political agendas, who doesn't get involved in the politics side of things, but that implements the policies that we as a group decide on. I think that's the, the right direction to go. So I, I'm not gonna support this because of my beliefs on the city administrator side of it, because that's really honestly a lot of what sold me on a city administrator is again, we'd have that separation of this person not being a political person, not steering political agendas, and we'd have a mayor who, who could do that on their own. So I'm not gonna support that for those reasons. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I too will not be supporting this resolution, and I'd like to address Alderman Carlson's concerns. Um, my constituents, uh, they already had a say as far as when I ran for this position three years ago and last year, I was for a full-time mayor and also a um, uh, full-time city administrator, so I'm, I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Koth. I'll just make a couple comments, and that is uh, when, this whole, when this whole idea of a city administrator uh, came up, uh, I, was, I was not sold on the idea. Uh, when I finally did support it, I uh, took the recommendation of the study committee that studied this for a couple of years that if we were going to go to a, a, a city administrator, they recommended then going to a part-time mayor. Uh, so that was the reason why I supported it in the first place. I didn't have a problem with the way it was before with having a, you know, a strong mayor in the council. Had no problem with that. But that study committee recommended to this body that we go to a, a city administrator with a part-time mayor. If this thing goes to a referendum, I personally can live with it with whatever they decide because it's their decision. As Alderman Carlson said, the taxpayers are gonna pay this salary whether it's 25,000 or $50,000 and I'm comfortable, very happy with you know, the citizens of Sheboygan that they can make an, intelli an intelligent choice as to what they want. They're very smart people and they usually get things right when they vote. So uh, I'm gonna support it going to a referendum and I, and I really, I, for my part, uh, I don't care how it ends up. Whatever they decide, I'll live with and we'll, we'll move on. Uh, Alderman Van Ackman, uh, Alderman, seeing it sitting in the Alderman chair there. Mayor Van Ackman, would you care to address address the Common Council on this? Uh, just because Corey asked. Let me know. get the right microphone. There we go. Just because Corey asked on my feelings and the things I've done this week. Um, my personal feelings, you know, I do believe in a, in a full-time mayor and, a, and a, not because of it's my position. It's going to be 2013 and, and whoever runs in 2013 wins that election. Um, I agree with the idea of keeping the political side different from the city administrator side and, and keeping that different. What I've done this week is I met with uh, two or three different uh, businesses that are in town here and, and look, looked at their concerns. I've met with the Chamber of Commerce and I think that's what the mayor should be doing is, is that kind of work with development and um, 
those type of things and settling policy. Working with the council, you should set the policy that we then give to the city administrator to implement. So I agree with those things. I agreed with those things prior to even becoming mayor. Uh, as I ran, um, I agreed with your ideas. You guys made the right decision to lower the mayor's salary at that point. Um, I think some of the, ch some of the day to day things have changed and I came forward saying that uh, I supported that and, and I actually said I would come forward in my first year, even though I'm not required to, that I would take the salary on whatever you guys set at 55, 60, whatever you came up with. Um, I stated that before I was elected. I still believe in that because that's what I believe the, the job is worth at this point. That's, and we're taking not my name on, off of it. That's what the job I think is, is should be worth at this point. Um, I think, um, you know, I was here right after uh, Mayor Shusha was here. Um, he says that we shouldn't have two pay, high paid people in there. Um, I beg to differ with that because Mayor, you had my cuts sitting right next to you getting paid a full-time salary as your assistant. That's not there anymore. You too had two high-paid people in, from the mayor's office, being Mike Cuts as your assistant and the mayor's job. We don't have that anymore. I agree with the city administrator and what you, your people did, um, but we've had two people, one on the policy side and one on the procedural side, for many years, long even before the uh, Jim Memorial, it was Michael Hutz for many years. And uh, to say that we didn't have those two people or that we didn't have two full-time salary is incorrect. Thank you, Mayor. Is there any other discussion on this? Okay, we have a, we'll take a vote on this then, and an I vote would be to uh, uh, pass the uh, resolution that we would go to a binding referendum. Would you call mm -hmm. the roll, please? I would do that. Uh, oh, well, belt is excused here. Oren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. No. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. No. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. No. Kittleson says no. Matt, check it. Raisler. No. Van Akron. No. Versi. Aye. Five eyes, six noes. Motion, Motion fails. So the recommendation, the recommendation to the Common Council then on Monday night will be that this uh, resolution failed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we will move on now to item number 11, which is Council document number 6-1 from 3-5 from the March 5th, 2012 Council meeting General Ordinance Number 71-11-12 by Alderpersons Carlson, Boren, and Hammond, an ordinance reestablishing the salary schedule for the office of mayor. Uh, I would need a motion to uh, open up discussion on this. Alderman Carlson, move to send it to the council with a favorable favorable recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, to send its council with a favorable recommendation under discussion. Alderman Raisler, thank you, Alderman Carlson. Do you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you maybe want to explain what exactly we're doing for the people mm -hmm. at home? Sure. <clears throat> the uh, resolution states that if the uh, if we if we have a full-time mayor, that starting in 2013, the salary would be fifty thousand dollars. And the benefit package would be the same as our non-represented employees, which is currently that our non-represented employees pay 12% of their health insurance. And as an elected official, I believe the rate into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund is more than the non-reps at 5.8. I believe it's 6.63, very close to that. 6.65. 6.65, 6 thanks, Alderman Hammond. <clears throat> Uh, in 2014, with a 2.5% increase, 
That salary would, would increase to 51250 In 2015, that salary would increase to $52,531. And in 2016, uh, that salary would be $53,844. And as also in the past, as in the past, with a full-time mayor, that mayor would not be able to have any outside employment. If, uh, if we were going to have a part-time mayor, uh, the salary starting in 2013 would be 25,000, and again would have a 2.5 percent increase every year. So 2014, it would be 25,625 dollars. 2015, it would be 26,266. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 2016, it would be 26,922 dollars. Uh, the, that part-time salary would also include the city benefits, as I described before, 12%. Uh, uh, the mayor would pay 12% for the, for the uh, health insurance and the 6. Uh, 6.65 into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. Uh, if, the, if it was a part-time position, uh, I believe the mayor would be able to have outside employment. So that's pretty much what it covers. Alderman Reisler, do you want to follow yeah, up? Yeah, if I can follow up on that, then I guess I'm going to recommend that we file um, that document and because it has the part-time language in, which has already been um, decided in the, in the previous vote that we would not recommend that. And we could fight the uh, salary out in um, item number 12, um, which would be the next one. Well, we have a motion on the floor right now. Uh, what, what we just voted on previously about the referendum is merely a recommendation to the council on Monday night. Uh, would you right, still would you still want to take a we'll take a vote on on Alderman Carlson's resolution? And I think based on the language, it has the part time information in there that it's that it's not it doesn't have any value. So that's why I'm looking at trying to fight it out in in the next document that has a specific value for a full time mayor and um, kind of go there because if it got passed then we're basically leaving that part-time language in there forever and, and there would not be a part-time if it wasn't passed at the council meeting. Well, we're gonna, have to vote, we're gonna have to vote on them all again Monday night, regardless how we vote on them tonight. Uh, I believe Alderman Versi is next. Thank you. Um, it is pertinent because you don't know it's not gonna pass. The referendum might pass on Monday night and this would pertain to that referendum, which would be attached, whether it's full-time, part-time, whatever language you want in there. This is establishing what Alderman Hammond was talking about with the salaries. Take out the name full-time, part-time, it's setting the salary schedule, allowing a part-time, or whatever you want to call them, to have outside employment at $25,000. So this document is important, and it needs to be. I guess based on the wording, that's why I'm saying it's not, because it has the part-time in there, number one, that doesn't cover what Alderman Hammond thought, and. Uh, if it goes forward, it, it just doesn't cover, it's, it's going to be too muddy. Well, as I said, we're going to have to vote on these all again Monday night, so I, uh, I would rather, I'm going to take a vote after we're done with the discussion here on, on Alderman Carlson's document, and uh, I'd rather take a vote on that tonight and come up with some kind of yay or nay going back to the council on Monday night, <clears throat> and then I think we can, we can take up those issues Monday night. Uh, Alderman Carlson, you're next. Alderman Hammond beat me to it. Just your finger. Please. Uh, next, I have the next light I have flashing here is Alderman Hammond. Uh, I, whether or not uh, this document makes it through Monday night is irrelevant. Uh, all we have done at this point in time is take the resolution with the referendum and it's going back to council with a negative. If it goes through that body with a positive, we have to have this document there to support it. This document needs to be in place regardless of whether or not that referendum passes come Monday night, we need this piece of paperwork. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just uh, wondering if it wouldn't be appropriate just to take those two documents together and let's have the conversation between, with both documents on, out there, you know. Are you talking about uh, the next agenda item? Yes, would it be appropriate to take both of those items and let's have the conversation on salary at this point.
Alderman Carlson, it's your document. What do you want to do with it? That's fine. Pardon? We pull forward the next document. All right. Let's discuss salary. All right. Let's pull forward then uh, document number 12. Uh, council document number 7-1 from the council meeting of March 5th, 2012. Subs of subs of general ordinance number 40-11-12 by Alderman Raisler, Sampson, Decker, and Versi. Uh, an ordinance reestablishing the salary schedule for the office of mayor, and I had in parentheses, that was the one that we had talked about earlier at $60,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, so we'll continue to, to discuss the previous one uh, item number 11 and number 12. Any discussion on those? Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, and again, I go back to, I, it's the term part-time that, that disturbs me. Whatever salary we wanna set, I can live with it, um, but the term <coughs> part-time is, is where we need, I think, to, to tweak. Um, I think, first off, I think um, WRF 6.65, um, I also think if you look at what the average private sector person in the state of Wisconsin, um, I've got studies, I brought them up to salaries and grievances, um, is paying it's uh, right around 18% um, for a single. Um, I think that's a starting point for health insurance for the mayor. I think a couple things, it leads by example. That's where we're going um, as, a, as a city eventually. Um, so I think you know, that leads by example. Um, and again, whether it's 50 or 55, um, you know, I can live with either one of those numbers as well um, and, and go from there. Um, you know, the part-time mayor, again, um, again, I just hate that term because we're all considered part-time. Really what we're dealing with is what does the benefits package look like? What does the pay package look like? Part-time just infers no benefits. It doesn't infer that they work any, any fewer hours, it's just no benefits. So, you know, again, let's just have that conversation. So um, my, that's my thought um, as far as um, the benefits package and salary levels. I should, as I did with the other document for the people watching, uh, go over what this includes at a $60,000 salary. That would be uh, the first year salary would be $60,000. That would be in 2013 and then that would be a 2.5% increase per year for the next three years. For 2014, that would be 61,500. 2015, 63,038 dollars. And in 2016, that would be 64,613. And again, uh, the full-time mayor would not be able to engage in outside employment and would com contribute the 12% and the 6.65 to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. Any discussion? Alderman Carlson. Well, I would like to make a motion to amend my original document to raise the, uh, the health insurance to 18% and keep the uh, um, Wisconsin retirement system at the same. And that applies to both, the, both pay structures at the 50 and the 25. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to amend, amend your document. <clears throat> with both pay structures to raise the health insurance to 18% and keep the WRS at 6.65. So we're gonna be voting first of all, we're gonna be voting first of all on, on item number 11, the amended document. Is there any further discussion on the amended document? Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I, I won't support that. Um, I, I know we will have or not. Will not. I couldn't hear you. But pardon? You will or will I not? I will not. Okay. Uh, we, we have uh, the wording in there right now to treat the mayor the same as the non reps. If the non reps go up, the mayors go up. I guess, yes, I like to see a lead by example, but it's going to go up either way if the non reps go up. If the status quo for public sector stays the same as what it is, I don't think we should punish the mayor by having him pay more for uh, his health insurance than anyone else. Thank you, Alderman Riesler. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote on uh, document number 11, and that would be both salary tiers for the 50 for the full-time, 25 for the part-time, with the increase of health insurance up to 18% and 6.65%. Alderman Versi. Thank you. This is actually directed to Alderman Hammond. To take out the word part-time, what could we 
put in place of that. Size of salary set for 25,000, 18% for health insurance. What else could we name that position? I think it should be, just mayor. sorry, can I just respond? Go ahead, Alderman Hammond. I think it should just be one pay scale. And you know, again, we make what, $4,600 a year, whatever that number is. Um, and you can work one hour a week or you can work 40 hours a week. Again, we should be looking at what the job entails and set a salary that's commensurate with that. Um, I just, uh, you know, so. I don't have a specific term. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Hammond. I, arguing over full-time, part-time becomes semantics at this point in time. Uh, you're, Alderman Hammond, you're, you're correct. You guys got me doing it now. Uh, <laughs> You're, you're, you're correct. It is exactly what you put into the job is what you're going to get out of it. You can work a part-time job, eight, and I've done it at 30 hours a week, making $30,000 a year. You can work a full-time job, 50, 60 hours a week, making $30,000 a year. It becomes, it really truly is semantics. I think the, the, the bottom line is, is, is the price tag that goes along with what we're doing. And that's the one thing that we haven't brought up. We're, we're, we haven't talked about a price tag yet. We haven't put a price tag on those. Whether or not it's part-time or full-time almost becomes irrelevant. But we need to establish that ratio. We need to establish those points, putting that price tag on the job the way we see it. Part-time at $35,000 a year, and you're working 40 hours a week. It's not the greatest living, but it, it's, it's a living. It sure does pay the bills. 40, uh, you're 40 plus? hours a week and you're making $55,000 a year. Now you're well above what uh, a living wage would be with benefits. We, we've got to put a price tag to those jobs. Well, you're going to get out of the job, what you're going to put into the job, and, the, and then that's what we're looking at is giving the voters the chance to decide what you're going to do. Thank you, Alderman Harmon. Uh, Alderman Heidemann, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, being one of the only people in this room that actually had a part-time position as mayor, I was never introduced as the part-time mayor. You're the mayor, whether you're putting, I said, you're the mayor of the city of Sheboygan. You should be very proud of holding that position, whether you're making 25,000, 50,000, 60,000. And if you're voted in by your, your, the constituents within the city of Sheboygan, uh, then um, whatever they're gonna decide whether they want a full-time or part-time, which I would like to see that up as a referendum. But again, you're never introduced as a part-time mayor. You're just the mayor of Sheboygan. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Alderman Hammond. And again, that's, that's my point. You know, we're arguing over part-time versus full-time. What really we're arguing over is what is the mayor doing and how much should he or she be paid to do it? And what benefit package goes along with it? I mean, Joe, or Alderman Heideman is exactly right. He doesn't get introduced as full-time or part-time mayor. He gets introduced as the mayor. Now, how much do we want to pay that in individual for the amount of time in a, or for the uh, job duties they have? You know, that's what it really comes down to. And if we pay him, like in Alderman Hammond's, I won't make that mistake, Alderman Hammond's example, $40,000, because we believe that with the city administrator and the reduced duties, that's what it's <coughs> worth, then that's what we should pay that individual. We don't get to tell an elected official whether they can work 30 hours or 40 hours or 20 hours. The taxpayers decide that based off of how well that individual is doing their job. So again, I think, not that I don't support necessarily um, a lower salary, but this whole part-time versus full-time conversation to me doesn't make any sense. It's what is the benefit package and what is the salary? If we say, we're gonna pay you 30 grand, we're not gonna give you any benefits and you can have a second job, well, kind of figure out that you're not gonna have a full-time mayor because they're probably gonna have a full-time job or could have a full-time job. So I think it's the way we structure that is what's gonna dictate. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Hammond. <laughs> now we got him doing it too. Uh, Everybody. You said it just at the uh, last possible moment there, and it's, it's the wording that comes into it. We're referring to it right now as, as a part-time mayor, but we're giving this person the opportunity then to have a job outside <coughs> of just here at City Hall. And then that's something that we <coughs> don't have in the wording for a full-time mayor. Uh, the full-time elected official, this is their job period, end of conversation. If we make it a part-time position, they can go find a way to supplement their income outside of these walls. Thanks, Alderman Hammond. Uh, Alderman Raisler. 
Thank you. I guess I'll concur on some of those things, and I guess I'll uh, defer to the press editorial where it says we need 100% uh, of the person's time, and I think that's right. This is going to be the side job. They're not going to go out and get a side job. for. They're, this is going to be their $25,000 a year side job while they have a full-time job someplace else. And if we want them dedicated to the city of Sheboygan, <coughs> it has to be a full-time position where we get 100% of their time. I don't want this to be the mayor's side job. I don't want to have the conflict of interest come up. I don't want to have any of that. I want to have our mayor be our full-time mayor. And if it's a full-time cheerleader, that's just one person's terminology. Uh, Alderman Heideman, I don't want to put you on the spot, but back in the day when you were the mayor of Sheboygan Falls, being a part-time position, and granted Sheboygan Falls is a lot smaller city than the size of Sheboygan, uh, can you give us some sense of the how much sense that you spent uh, as mayor of Sheboygan Falls on a weekly basis, you know, with your meetings and your other responsibilities? Well, Chairman, I'm actually making more as an alderman in Sheboygan than I was in the mayor of Sheboygan Falls. <laughs> so, I mean, you're going to pay it back? I, I, yeah. So, but uh, I would say on an average, it was anywhere between 20 and 25 hours, or what you were called upon to do. Again, we ran the meetings. We had a smaller common council. We didn't have as many people. And again, it is a smaller community. But again, it do doesn't come down to the pay that you're getting to perform this job. I, I mean, I, it, Alderman Hammond said, you know, I didn't take on being an alderman because I wanted to get the money. If it takes me 20 hours in a week, I'll work the 20 hours a week. Um, again, you just do it for the, the love and what you want to do for your constituents in Sheboygan. It, it basically shouldn't come down to how much money you're getting paid. Thanks, Alderman Heideman. Uh, Alderman Carlson, you're next. Thank you. I would just have to wholeheartedly disagree with you, your last statement, uh, Alderman Racer. If you look at Alderman Hammond, for example. He works a full-time job. He works many, uh, much more than just the f standard 40 hours a week. And he probably puts in more time in City Hall than, uh, than most of the council besides the, the few retired people. But he works a full-time job and still dedicates <coughs> Many, many hours here in the city, so I, I think that statement is just uh, way off base, and the, the press is way off base with that statement also. Thanks, Alderman Carlson. Uh, Alderman Van Akron, you're next. Thank you. I will politely disagree with my colleague from over there. Um, I think, as Alderman Hammond said, it, it is about the mayor's office. It's about the time requirement that the mayor or the, the position calls for. And, and what is the compensation for that? By, by lowering it down to $25,000 in, in a, a position that I think is gonna call for a large percent, uh, percent of your time, a, a large portion of your time, way more than, than part-time type hours. It's going to be your full-time job. And by reducing it to, to the salary scales here, I think you really constrict the, the type of applicants that are able to even go for that type of position. I think you really constrict the the type of person who has that lifestyle or that ability to do that. And, and then you have to ask yourselves, what are you expecting from that person? What do you expect to get from that person? Do you expect to just get them to show up on Monday night meetings, pound a gavel, and you know go to ribbon cuttings? Or what are our expectations? I don't think any of that has been discussed. Um, I think the mayor's position in the city of Sheboygan requires a lot more than that. It requires, as the paper said, 100% of your involvement. Um, I think we've seen that. I don't think that part of that has changed that much. I think the mayor's position requires a great deal of your time. I'm in favor of lowering the salary position. I have been all along, no matter who the mayor was, or no matter who the mayor is, I have been in favor of lowering the, the salary scale based on the fact that I believed in the city administrator position and, and I believe it's the right thing to do. Um, but I don't believe that this in any way is a part-time job for a city this size. We need a full-time mayor. I think it requires full-time, um, as far as full-time duties, full-time um, investment of your time, what we pay that person, I think, is a difference. Like, like um, Alderman Heiderman said, Alderman Hammond said, the mayor is the mayor. But I think our mayor here in the city of Sheboygan requires a great deal of time and will require from that person a great deal of time. And if, you, if you're only going to be offering $25,000, I think you really restrict the type of applicants and the ability of who wants to to take that on. I, I don't think there are a lot of people that are able to do that. So I think, I think reducing the salary to some of the ideas that have been put out is appropriate, but I do think that our mayor position here in the city of Sheboygan requires a great deal of time, and I want to see that person fulfill that time, not go out and work a different job because they need to make their, their family budget work. Like I said, I think by doing this, we really constrict the type of applicants we're going to get. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. 
Alderperson yes. Kittleson. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. And I guess I have to agree. Um, the people that I talk to out in the district, and I do a lot of walking and talking, they want a full-time mayor. Um, and, and we need to pay that full-time. There's, there's a ton of work for the mayor to do. I know that. I, um, and I'm one of those retired people that's around here a lot, and, and I know how much work there is here. So I, 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 I think we need a full-time mayor, and I think we need to pay that person properly. Um, as our mayor said, we don't have a Mike Cuts type person in that office anymore. That mayor is taking on a, a, a lot of responsibility. We need to pay him properly. We need to keep him full time. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. Is there any further discussion? Alderman Hammond. Again, um, you know, the conversation full time, part time, that's not the argument here. <laughs> the argument is the duties of the mayor are X. What is the pay that goes along with that and the benefit package that goes along with that? Um, you know, I don't care how many hours the mayor spends in that office. That's right. um, the taxpayers will decide whether that's enough hours and whether or not they're doing a job. The question is, uh, mayor's got to do X, Y, and Z. What is that worth? And that's the decision we have to make. I know it's been framed by the editorial, and I didn't read it, so, but, um, sorry, press. The editorial, and it's been, you know, in letters and stuff, this full-time versus part-time, that's not the argument in my mind. The argument in my mind is, here's the job description, here's the set of duties, how much is that in pay and benefits? Um, all the, to Alderman Releasa's point, I, I have to disagree with him. I think that um, as the elected official elected by the taxpayers, you know, it, it should be um, more commensurate with what the people that are paying the bills are getting as far as you know the health insurance and things like that. Again, I'm not going to speak for the, for our current mayor, um, but again, I think uh, um, he may agree with that that sentiment as well. I, I know if I was getting benefits, I'd want it that way. Um, it's hard to represent somebody when uh, you know you're paying only 12 percent or 15 percent. Again, as an elected official, city employees different, and tell somebody, well, that's feeling the pain of paying 25 or 30 percent towards their health insurance. So. Um, I would ask that I would fully support keeping that 18 percent in there, um, the 6.65, and uh, you know, the 50, 55 thousand dollar salary. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, pass uh, resolution uh, number six one, uh, and it was amended. Uh, I don't think we've taken a vote on the amendment yet. We haven't. So first of all, we're going to take a, 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 a vote on the uh, amended document, which increases the health insurance premium to 18% and keeps the, well, the Wisconsin health insurance at 6.65. Uh, so we'll call the roll on that one. Just repeating, so we're keeping the salary at 50000 with an, with eight, or just amending? Yeah, the only amendment so far was just to increase the health insurance and keep the, uh, and we're keeping the Wisconsin retirement at 6.65. So an I vote would uh, approve the amend amendment. Just the amendment. Yes. Okay, on the amendment alone. All right. Um, Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson says aye. Raisler? No. Van Akron? Aye. And Versi? Aye. <clears throat> Nine ayes, two noes. Um, motion passes. Now we have to take a, a vote on the document, uh, taking into account those changes of the 18% and the 6.65. Uh, Alderman Van Akron? Thank you, Chairman. Again, I, I did support the amendment. However, I'm not going to support this document. I would support that amendment on, on the other document. I don't support the document because of the, the two separate pay scales. If, if that same amendment was on the, the upcoming document, I would support that, but I'm not going to support this document because of the, the two different pay scales um, because I, I don't believe that's the right way to go. So I just want to explain, again, I, I, vote, I support the amendment to go to 18%. However, I don't. I won't support this document as it is. Thanks, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Versi, you're next. Chairman, um, Alderman Van Akron, you have to uh, remember also that this is kind of needed. If document number ten passes on Monday night, to have that referendum, we need this. I understand. So, 
number 10 has not died yet. Um, you have to wait for a count, full council. So if you kill one and not the other, you're still gonna, it's still going to need to be brought back up and passed. So you still need both. If it does go to referendum, the people choose. It may come back, they choose a full-time mayor. So it, it's not up to us. It'll be up to them. But we have it all in place. So either way, I mean, you can look <laughs> at it not supporting the, the fact of that, but you still have to support the document if it goes through on Monday night. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Any further discussion before the vote? Alderman Warren. Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman Thank Decker. you. Attorney McLean, could you uh, let us know your feelings on what was just said there? If uh, number 10 were to go through Monday night, would we be able to eventually bring something back for our salary for the part-time? The first document called for a referendum at the November election? Yes. Uh, and it's my understanding that the Committee of the Whole recommended against that. Yes. Uh, so I don't know, I, I don't see that there's any conflict you know, if those that recommended against that, I assume are gonna recommend against the document that has two different pay scales on it, but I don't know. Uh, if the question is, if, if there is a referendum on whether or not uh, the mayor's position is full-time or part-time, uh, it depends again then on uh, as Alderman uh, Hammond talked about, uh, is it more appropriate to set what the salary is, regardless of whether the title is full-time or part-time, what you expect as the, uh, the duties of the office? Uh, and it does become sort of a semantic thing as to whether or not it's full-time or part-time, if, you know. Uh, so I don't... As it relates to the motion you've got in front of you, I don't see that you have to vote uh, to recommend that to the council just because um, the council might choose to, uh, to pass a referendum on whether full-time or part-time. Let me ask you a question, Attorney McLean. Statutorily, the only, and what, I guess we're talking about job descriptions, I don't want to get into that very much, but statutorily, the mayor is, presides at the council meetings, is on the plan, plan commission, the transit commission, has police powers, uh, and anything in addition to that is pretty much up to what the mayor wants to do. Would you agree? I mean, how active the mayor wants to be with the Chamber of Commerce or the Development Corporation, but statutorily, did I pretty well lay out what the mayor's duties are? Runs the council meetings, has, uh, adopts the, or presents the budget to the budget, council. I forgot the budget, yes. Has a line item veto on the budget. That's not statutory, but that's by our ordinance in the city. Uh, Appointments. Uh, and... and on that, that note, uh, just like to comment uh, on one item that was, I think, uh, former Mayor Susha had made some comment that, uh, that the council changed the form of government. Uh, you didn't change the form of government. You create a new position. Uh, the form of government is still council mayor form of government. You have not uh, expressly taken away any of the statutory authority of the mayor. You've taken... Uh, You've assigned some administrative functions to the chief administrative officer, but the, the mayor's statutory authority was not changed by creating the chief administrative officer. So, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis as to what the mayor does, uh, one thing wouldn't be doing with the chief administrative officer now that we've got is uh, really directly overseeing the departments. Uh, that's basically the difference as I see it. Attorney McLean, if we vote on Monday night, going back to the previous document where we decide whether we're gonna put this to a referendum, if the vote on Monday night is not to go to a referendum, it's a moot point then whether the mayor is gonna be full-time or part-time, the mayor is still gonna be a full-time person coming up in 13, is that correct? Unless we would take, a, unless we would change 
the charter ordinance take a separate vote to make it, uh, if we wanted to do that ourselves, we could change it to a part-time job. But if this does not go to, if we vote not to take it to a referendum on Monday night, it's kind of a moot point. Unless we make a change, it's gonna be a full-time position starting, uh, continuing in 13. Not necessarily. If you change the salary such that it really is a $20,000 salary with no benefits, mm -hmm. uh, as a practical matter, it's probably going to be a part-time position right? without a referendum or anything. So I, I think it really hinges on uh, what you set as a salary for the position. Somebody's going to have to take a look at it and say, you know, uh, am I going to run for that job? Can, you know, can I afford in my situation to do that? Uh, as a living and support my family or am I retired and I don't need I don't need to support a family I've got the, uh, some retirement pension check coming in and I'm just doing this uh, as a part-time thing and maybe a lower salary is acceptable uh, you know it really hinges on I think what you said is the salary and uh, what you feel the position is worth thank you attorney McLean any further discussion before I take the vote Okay, we're voting now on, an, on the amended uh, ordinance establishing the salary for mayor and the benefits. And the amendment is that we're going to 18% for the health insurance, keep it at 6.65 for the Wisconsin Retirement Fund with two salary schedules, 50,000 for part-time and 20, I'm sorry, 50,000 for full-time, 25,000 for part-time. Let's call the roll, please. Morin. Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? No. Hammon? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? No. Kittleson says no. Raisler? No. Van Akron? No. Inversi? Aye. We have six ayes and five noes. Motion carries. Okay, now we're down to document number 12, which we'll take a separate vote on after discussion, and that's uh, council document number 71 from March, from the March 5th, 2012 council meeting. Subs of subs of general ordinance number 40-11-12 by Alder Persons Raisler, Sampson, Decker, and Versi, an ordinance reestablishing the salary schedule for Office of the Mayor, $60,000. And I previously read what the salary schedule would be for the ensuing years. So I'll entertain a motion on that, on that uh, document. Uh, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we support this and move it forward with a, re a positive recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, uh, move ahead with this. Uh, Alderman Versa, you're next. If I may throw an amendment out there right away on this, if we can go change the salary to 50,000 and 18, 18% for the health insurance and WRS at 665. Second. Okay, we have an, an, an amendment to uh, change this document to $50,000. Uh, Alderman uh, Versi, would that include the 2.5% uh, increase a year then? Correct. Okay. Is that all right with a second? Yes. Any discussion on that? Uh, hearing no discussion, let's please take the roll on that one. Just Born. on the amendment, right? Just on the amendment. Just on the amendment. Warren. Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? No. Kittleson says no. Raisler? No. Van Akron? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Eight eyes, three noes. Motion okay, the, carries. the motion carries. And is there any discussion on that before we take a, a, a vote on the document itself? Alderman Carlson, did you have anything or was that from before? I was going to make the same motion. Thank you. 
Okay, no discussion. Let's take a, a vote on, on the uh, document number 71 as amended with a $50,000 salary, raising the health insurance premium share for the mayor to 18% and WRS at 6.65. Please call the roll. Oren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. No. Kittleson says no. Raisler. No. Van Akron. Aye. And Versi. Aye. Eight ayes, three noes. Uh, motion carries. <clears throat> document uh, passes as amended. Next, we have uh, the next meeting date. Uh, that'll be determined. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you.